One of the best things about a custom mechanical keyboard is that you can have the keys behaving exactly the way you want them to since you can reprogram the firmware on the board. That's the power of full programmability. So you'll be tinkering with layouts a fair bit once it's built so you should know how this works and, and choose a board that you can program easily according to how comfortable you are with the software side of things. I decided to program my GH60 with Easy AVR and that's what I'd recommend for most beginners as long as it supports your PCB, which it probably does, even if not officially. There's an active thread on GeekHack, it has an easy to use GUI and you can load the firmware to your board right from the application. So easy. You won't need to bother with Git or the command line at all and once you have Flip or DFU set up, you can set up all your layouts and flash your board really easily. Uh, here you can see I've set up some essential macros for any YouTuber when writing comments or video descriptions. My two Korean boards both use the same firmware which allows you to customize the layout and LEDs fairly easily even though the documentation was somewhat almost totally lacking. <laughs> Here's the Jigon application that I use to talk to my TX1800 and my TXCP. You can see how it's possible to change both the layout and the LED modes for the switches and the RGB under lighting. I was pretty confused when I first started using Jigon, but I figured it out eventually and I recently found that there's, uh, there's an English language manual that a few users have put together which does a really good job of explaining how to use it. It doesn't explain everything, there's still a few kind of hidden unknown mysteries but uh, if you read that you'll, you'll figure it out. So I've left a link to that in the description as well. Uh, my Monarch is programmed using TMK through text files in the command line. It's not the method I'd recommend unless you're interested in setting up a development environment and you're comfortable with all that stuff. Uh, so for me, on a Windows PC, that involved uh, using Git to copy the firmware files to my machine and compiling it using the make command. I'm not so comfortable using Git, but it's something I want to get more comfortable with, so I'm going to stick with this method. I'll probably move to uh, QMK in the future. So the command line stuff was okay for me as I used to use Linux exclusively. It's just going to be a bit too involved for some people. So you can see here that the function key and numlock will cycle through the LED and brightness levels and that I've swapped backspace to my preferred position where the caps lock usually is. So recently online firmware utilities that allow you to set up your layout and download a hex file you can flash straight to your board are becoming more popular. I haven't tried any of those but if you have then let me know which ones are good in the comments. There's a ton of choices when it comes to building your own mechanical keyboard, which is great and quite confusing at first. The good thing is that there are lots of people willing to help you if you're a beginner. So thanks for watching part two of this little look at what building your own keyboard entails. If you like this kind of thing, then let me know in the usual ways and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.